Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here, and welcome to another video. In this one, I'll be sculpting a werewolf. All right, so this werewolf is an addition to my monster series or universe that I unintentionally started. I made the Grim Reaper, and then I made a zombie, and then after the zombie, you all wanted me to expand on everything with a werewolf, and that's exactly what I did. So, with all that said, if you want to see me sculpt this thing, then let's get started. All right, here we go. Can you guess what the first step is? Armature. And quick note, as always, all of the materials used in this video are listed in the description below, along with my affiliate links if you'd like to purchase any of them. Now for the armature on this piece, I'm not using any wire just yet. I'm just shaping everything out with aluminum foil. At this point, the only thing I have planned out for this guy is the fact that I want him to have really bulky, exaggerated limbs and a small waist. If you're wondering why I'm not using wire to shape him out first, it's simply because, personally, I don't think it's necessary for sculptures that I make that have large limbs. The aluminum wire that I always use isn't the most supportive on its own, but it's great at holding its shape, and that's all I needed to do. Uh, you can always use a stronger wire if you'd like, especially if you're using a heavier clay or a clay that doesn't require bulking. I would actually recommend a stronger wire for that. Um, and yeah, this is just what I prefer. And then as you saw there, after I shaped everything out in the foil, I held it all together with masking tape and now I'm covering the entire thing with Super Sculpey. And to get those nice thin sheets that you saw, I just ran the clay through my pasta maker on the thickest setting. And I'm just getting the feet the same size and then now it's time to add the toes. I'm just adding balls of clay to the end of them like that, blending it in, making them pointy and repeating this process he's going to have four toes on each foot and as you can see even this early on this guy is going to be pretty anthropomorphic it's going to have human features and animal features that work together to create one cohesive look now i'm adding some toenails to make those i just rolled out a little teardrop shape flattened them out and stuck them on pretty easy And then once all the nails are on, I'm just going in and refining everything with my color shaper. And my explorer tool to add some wrinkles and details. Now to start the fur on the feet, I rolled a piece of clay through my pasta maker and I'm cutting out a jagged edge on one side with my broken palette knife. Then I'm adding this piece to the foot and I start to detail the fur with my explorer tool. And then very early on here, I'm not liking how that texture is looking, so I decide to take another route. And using this gouging tool, I'm taking out chunks of clay to give the surface of the fur some more dimension. And then I go in with, I think it's called an elevator tool, but I'm not sure. But it's got this nice smooth arrowhead that I'm using to press in a nice fur texture. And this is what I use for all of the fur. And then as you can see, a bonus to having large limbs is that the sculpture can be freestanding and it doesn't need a base or an exposed dowel to help it stand. If I don't have to add a base to a sculpture, I'm not going to do it because I really don't like bases. I mean, sometimes they are necessary, but if I don't have to have one, I won't do it. create the fur texture with this tool I'm just making these little interlocking S shapes like that I thought giving it a little curl would make it a little more interesting now once the fur on the feet and the bottom of the legs is pretty much done I'm going to create the edges of his ripped pants and this is the same process I use whenever I add clothes to a piece. I just run my clay through my pasta maker, cut out whatever edge I want. In this case, I want it to look ripped. And then I add it to the sculpture and blend in the other side. And I just repeat this process on both legs. Now I want to add a couple rips and holes to other areas of the pants as well. So I'm just pressing out a rip with my pointy spoon tool and then I texture the inside of the rip to look like fur. Now I'm just adding some more little details to the bottom of the pants here, making the rips a little more exaggerated and then making another hole on the other side. And now it's time to add the wrinkles. To create the wrinkles, like I do with every sculpture that I need to make wrinkles for, 
I rolled out a snake of clay that tapers on each end, added it to the sculpture, and then blended both sides in with the rest of the piece. Like that. And I really want it to look like he grew bigger than the clothes he was wearing, so I'm adding a good amount of wrinkles that all look like they're pulling from the same direction. And that's looking pretty good. Alright, now it's time to create a hole in the top of the torso to add wire for his arms. And I just poked that hole all the way through with a bamboo skewer and added my aluminum wire in there. Now I want to bring out his chest a little bit more, so I'm just adding another piece of clay, blending that in, and then adding individual tufts of fur that I also blend in. And then because the tufts are smaller, I am going to blend them with my firm rubber tool. And I just hit blending like 40 times. <laughs> I'm not too worried about anything looking perfect here because I'm just going to go in and texture all of it anyway and you're not going to see any flaws. We're just texturing that fur like crazy. This was a really satisfying process. I've really enjoyed making the fur on this guy. Now it's time to make the waistband. To do this, I am just using a straight even piece of clay, adding to the waist and blending the bottom edge in. After this is on and blended, I'm going in with a couple different tools to create some rips. And now I'm creating the ripped edge of his shirt. I do this just by adding a snake of clay in a jagged shape that I like, and I'm blending one side in with the rest of his chest. Here I'm creating the front of his shirt that's still buttoned. Same process, snake of clay, blending in the edge, and then I add a couple tiny buttons. Now we're adding some wrinkles, just like we did with the pants. Finishing off the edge of his shirt, up here on his shoulders. Now I'm adding some seams wrinkles, and final details. And now my piece of crap tripod is slowly falling down. Not bad, looking pretty good. Now I'm adding some final details to his toenails, just using my explorer tool to create some fine ridges. And now I'm brushing the entire surface with clay softener, getting him ready for his first bake. But wait, I almost forgot. I had to add a hole so that I can attach the tail later on. All right, that was awkward. Let's stick him in the oven. And then out of the oven when he's cooled down, it's time to bulk out those arms with aluminum foil. And then as I'm doing this, whenever you're initially adding pieces to your sculpture, whether it's armature, foil, clay, whatever, my advice is always start small, put on less than you think you need. For me at least, it's always easier to add onto a sculpture than take away. Whenever I add too much clay or make something too big, I always end up just starting that part over. But if I don't add too much right away, I can always add more later on. And that's just how I work at least, and that's exactly what I did with these arms. And I'm doing it right here, making his shoulders bigger. And then, you know, don't add too much clay to one part. For Super Sculpey, which is what I'm using, on the box it says to not have any areas of clay be more than a quarter inch thick. So just try to stay within that because you don't want cracks or any problems when you bake it. And then for the design of this guy, I've decided that I want one arm to still be in a sleeve and the other sleeve to be completely ripped off. So I'm just texturing the fur on this arm right here. And then really quick here, just because I know I'm going to get comments about this. After I made this thing, I discovered that there is a difference between a werewolf and a wolf man. A werewolf is from mythology and it's a regular wolf during the day or something, but when it sees the moon it turns into a werewolf. And then a wolf man is just a dude that turns into a wolf when he sees the moon. So technically, because this thing has clothes, I'm sculpting a wolf man if you go by this, but there's a lot of conflicting information out there, so just know that I realize what's going on here. That is all. Let's make some hands. I want these to have four fingers, and I'm just shaping them out here. I left all the footage in again for you guys. Adding the fur. Again, same process that I did with the feet. 
rolled that through my pasta maker, cut out the jagged edge, attached it to the hand, blended it in, and now I'm texturing the fur, adding some wrinkles, and now some claws. And then I sculpt the other hand off camera using this exact same process. And those are looking pretty good. Let's attach them. That was easy. All right, now while I'm finishing up some stuff here, um, here's something you probably don't know. I really don't like sculpting animals, even anthropomorphic ones. It doesn't mean I won't make them, obviously, and I do find enjoyment in the process at some point, but it's mostly just me telling myself I don't like it before I start sculpting. So anyway, believe it or not, uh, throughout like 92% of creating this werewolf, I really didn't like him, and I can actually go as far as to say I hated him at certain points. I had to keep talking myself into this guy so many times because I just wanted to throw him in the trash and scrap the whole thing, but I didn't and I pushed through and I'm the type of person that I'd rather have a finished piece that I don't like than an unfinished piece that I don't like. At least then, if it's done, my time went towards something. And okay, moral of the story here isn't to force yourself to sculpt something that you don't like. It's just to have faith in yourself and keep pushing forward even if you've lost all hope in whatever it is you're creating. You just might surprise yourself in the end. And you'll have another great learning experience under your belt and a finished piece that you can stick in the closet or something and never look at again. At least it's done, right? And in the end, I did end up really liking how this werewolf turned out even if it literally took me until the last stroke of paint went on. So I'm happy to say that this werewolf is not going to be joining my box of death, as I like to call it, with a bunch of sculptures that I made that I don't like. So maybe one day I'll show you them. Anyway, here we are making the head. I just added the eyes, as you saw, the brow bone, some lower eyelids. I'm just detailing some wrinkles here with my explorer tool, pushing that detail. And now I'm adding some wrinkles that really don't belong, and it makes this thing look like some type of angry potato so those aren't gonna work let's take them off try that again just adding the nose really quick nostrils with my dotting tool a couple of details adding the mouth and then I forgot to stick the skewer in so I'm doing that now and finishing off the mouth Here I'm just experimenting with a bunch of different ideas for how to finish off the face. Um, I know I want him to be snarling, so I'm just trying to achieve that effect here with some wrinkles like that. It's starting to work. Didn't really like how those looked though. I'm gonna make them a little more subtle. And then just using my color shaper to do that. Adding a couple fangs, seeing how that looks. Doesn't look right. So now I decided to have the teeth showing on each side of his face and I just shaped that out with my explorer tool and now I am pressing out the teeth with my wedge color shaper like that and this was actually really effective and I was happy with how they turned out. Just refining everything here, pushing that detail Going crazy with my color shaper and explorer tool. And that's looking okay. I remember I didn't love it at this point. So we're just gonna keep trying and keep pushing this thing. So let's add some ears. Maybe it'll look better if I add ears. That's what I was thinking. Just adding those on. And while the ears are looking pretty good, I'm not sold on his face. I really don't like it. I think he looks more like a rat than an, a wolf. So I'm just widening the tip of his snout here and redoing his nose, all that. And I am much happier with how this thing looks now. Setting all those details in there again. And we're moving along, getting somewhere. And then as a final detail on the head, I am just adding a very smooth, subtle fur texture, like that. Just 
finding some more areas here and then brushing the entire thing with clay softener to remove fingerprints and he's ready for another bake. Then out of the oven, once he's completely cooled down, it's time to permanently attach the head and beef up his neck a little bit. And I'm just adding a bunch of clay to do just that. Just going to town with it. And this part was fun because I really started to see it all come together. Just blocking out some shapes, adding some fur, blending everything in like so. Then once everything is blocked out, it's time to go in with that fur texture again. And I'm being extra careful with the head just because this is the focal point of the sculpture and I want it to look the best. This was a really fun, satisfying process. I loved doing this. Now I'm further refining the fur with my Explorer tool and I'm just going in between all of the indents that I made with another line. And now some more clay softener to remove fingerprints, bake him again. But before I stick him in the oven, I'm gonna make his tail and attach that. I just used a piece of aluminum wire to shape it out, added some aluminum foil, some clay, adding that fur texture all over the place, attaching it with some bacon bond, and he's good to go. And then just so the tail didn't shift in the oven, I added that ball of aluminum foil there to hold it in place. And now it's time for paint. I decided to give him gray fur, and that's what we're doing here. To create this gray color, I mixed black, white, and brown. And I want his face, his hands, and his feet to be a lighter shade than the longer fur that is on everything else. To make the darker gray, I just tinted the original gray that I made with some more black and brown. Now I'm going in with a smaller paintbrush to paint all the areas that are right up against the other gray. Now for the fun part. Once that base layer of paint is completely dry, I am dry brushing some lighter gray on top of all of the raised areas like that. And this really brings out that fur texture and looks awesome. And then when I dry brush like this, I don't wanna start off too light. I go with a color that's pretty close to the original color at first, and then I just work my way up lighter like that. Now I'm just adding some shadows to the face, like that, with some darker gray. I believe I added these shadows using the color of the darker fur, like that. Now it's time to paint his eyes. I decided to make them yellow, and I just want them to have a black dot in the middle, just a pupil, nothing crazy. Now I'm painting his claws. Um, initially. I decided to paint them this sort of neutral yellow color and I don't end up keeping it. I actually changed them to black. I didn't want them to be really noticeable, but I wanted you to see them still. So I thought this would look good, but I end up just starting over with black and I think the black looks way better. Just finishing up the nails, and it's time to paint the teeth. Just using an off-white color, like that. Not worried about getting it on the lips because I'm gonna paint those later. Now I'm just antiquing the teeth by adding some watered down dark brown, and then dabbing off the excess with a paper towel. Now we're painting his lips black, like so. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'm painting the nose, adding the pupils, highlighting the claws a little bit, like that. 
and then painting the inside of the ears, darkening them just slightly. And then now I'm dry brushing some pure white all over the place. And then adding some shadows to his eyes to just give them some more dimension. Antiquing these details here in the front of his snout. Adding some shadows like that with some dark brown that's been extremely watered down. Adding some little reflections to his eyes. Now it's time to paint his shirt. I decided on this nice mustardy color and I'm just painting the entire surface, being careful not to get any of that yellow onto his fur that I just worked so hard on. Now I'm just adding on a couple more colors here to give that yellow a little bit more dimension so it's not so flat. And then like the zombie, I decided to give this guy a plaid shirt as well. I'm just going in with some darker brown that complements the mustard color and I'm adding vertical and horizontal lines all over the shirt. Like so. And then I forgot to paint the little strips of shirt that are hanging on his arms here so I'm going in and doing that now. And then to finish off the plaid I'm just going in with a thin light brown line adding that to each of the thick brown lines that are already there crisscrossing them like so and now it's time to paint his shorts I initially wanted to make them blue jeans but the blue was too close the blue that I wanted to use was too close to his fur color so I went with brown and I ain't mad I think it looks okay just carefully painting those then I go in with some shadows and highlights get those to a point that I really like. And I did add a little bit of a cross hatching texture when I was sculpting to different areas of his pants just to give it a le another level of texture. Now for the final step, I'm glazing his eyes, nose, and teeth with some glossy acrylic varnish. And he's done! The werewolf is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments, and then also let me know what you want me to sculpt next. And that's a wrap. I really hope you like how the werewolf turned out. Um, I'm pretty happy with him. I think he looks cool and he makes a good addition to my monster universe that I do plan to continue expanding with other characters. So let me know down below which monster character I should make next. The music for this video was provided by Tiff Music. I will link his YouTube channel and his Patreon down below. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay. Thank you so much for 80,000 subscribers. I can't believe we're moving this fast. It's blowing my mind. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one.